Hello everybody, Sergey from Core here. And today I would like to talk to you about the utilities section of the TT Toolbox Grasshopper plugin. If you'd like to follow along, you can actually get this file from our Food for Rhino page. So scroll down under the download links, you'll see the TT Toolbox to samples. And that's just a zip file uh, with a bunch of Grasshopper definitions that will show you how to use different aspects of TT Toolbox. And this specific file is called core t3 utilities. All right, so let's jump straight ahead. First of all, uh, I'd like to talk about units. And we have a couple of useful components here, the first one being Rhino units. And this tool is extremely simple. All it does is fetch the units and the unit index that your Rhino document is currently set to. So right now you can see that my document is set to feet and my index is four. We can change that, so let's go to units and we'll switch from feet to meters for all the European viewers out there. And now we'll go back um, and we'll notice that nothing has changed, but that's just because we have to hit refresh first. Once we hit refresh, the units change to meters and the index changes to two. This is very useful for definitions where the unit system actually matters for some sort of a calculation that you're doing inside of Grasshopper. Uh, so now you can easily fetch that data out of your document. Another component that has to do with units is the convert units component. And this is exactly what it sounds like. Uh, it allows you to provide a value and provide the source unit, target unit, and it will do the conversion for you. Uh, it will also give you the conversion factor, which is very handy. And uh, you can do linear units, uh, but we can convert area, volume, so uh, we can convert you know, from cubic feet to cubic inches, and so on and so forth. Now, moving on to time, here we have a time series component. So what this allows you to do is it allows you to provide two daytime objects as start and end, and you will get uh, a number of very useful information uh, about this time range. So first of all, you're going to get the time delta in hours or days. So here we know that these two dates are 48 hours or two days apart. We can also get the interpolated hours between the start date and the end date. And uh, we can get every single date between these two dates as well, hour by hour. So this is uh, very useful for situations where you just need to you know, know what the time delta is between two dates, or if you, let's say, are running some sort of a solar simulation or an environmental analysis tool, and you just need to quickly generate a number of hour by hour um, timestamps, essentially. The next component uh, is called curve type. And just to show you where everything lives, we can find it right here. Again, super simple, but extremely useful. This allows you to analyze a set of curves and derive information such as a type of curve, you know, is it a line, is it a circle, an arc, an ellipse? Rhino has several different curve types. Uh, it will tell you the degree of your NURBS curve. Uh, it will check whether it is a closed curve or an open curve. And it will also test this curve for linearity. Next up, uh, we have the GUID component. And it just allows you to generate a certain number of GUIDs. Now, if you're not familiar with what a GUID is, GUID stands for Globally Unique Identifier. And it's essentially an alphanumeric string that is useful because it is very, very unique. The GUID algorithm allows you to generate 10 to 30 trillion of GUIDs before you start hitting a 50% chance of collision. 
So if you quickly need to generate a series of unique non-sequential strings and have a very high confidence in them not repeating at any point, uh, then GUIDs are a way to go. And TT Toolbox allows you to easily generate any number of them as you please. All right, so there are a couple of other components that are not part of the sample file, but they still deserve our attention. And these are the brute force and the brute force classic components uh, in the utilities panel. So let's start with the classic one. For those of you who remember the original release of TT Toolbox version 1.x, um, you might be familiar with the brute force component. And this tool allowed you to generate you know, uh, a couple of sliders. So I'm going to create three sliders that go from 0 to 10. And I will plug them in one by one into the number sliders input right here. And it's very important that we plug them in directly, right? So that we're not moving through like a merge component or something in between. We need a direct connection between the number slider and the brute force component. And we will also create a Boolean toggle. So now you can see that it is showing us a number of total permutations. And if we look at its output, then it will show it us uh, here as well. This component essentially allows us to step through every single permutation of our inputs. If you've ever used the animate slider functionality in Grasshopper, uh, then you're kind of familiar with the concept. But what this allows you to do is it allows you to step through multiple sliders at the same time, which is certainly an upgrade, at least in my book. And we've used this component for things like exploring the design space uh, between multiple options or um, trying to generate a data set where you really have to kind of abuse your grasshopper definition and step through every single combination of inputs uh, to generate a lot of different options or data points. And this is really all there is to it. Uh, you'll notice that when we switch this component on, we don't really get any output. The output is just for the component to communicate with us. Uh, all it does is it moves the sliders. And you'll also notice here that um, the order in which we plugged in our sliders does matter. So the first slider that we plugged in gets iterated upon more frequently. Uh, then when this slider runs out, it moves on to the next one. When this one runs out, it will move on to the next one. Um, and so on and so forth. And then if you have some sort of um, downstream components that are plugged into the sliders, then those components will be expired and updated as well. And the rest of your definition will rerun with these inputs. While we are running the export, uh, you can see that there is a handy progress bar that tells you how far along we've gotten. Uh, you can see the numerical kind of identification of uh, where we are in the export process based on the total, as well as some uh, useful metadata like average time per solve or the estimated total time. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn off this component. It might misbehave a little bit, but now it's off. And it tells us that, well, brute force operation was run successfully. Um, and this is really it for the original or uh, the classic brute force component. One big limitation of the brute force component is that it cannot operate on text data, right? So we can only operate on sliders. Um, and we cannot operate on things like a panel. So this is why we've also added uh, the new brute force component, which um, is a lot more similar to some of the other uh, tools that came out of Core Studio, such as Calibri, for example, uh, but a lot simpler in what it's trying to do. This allows you to plug in not only sliders, so let's once again um, plug in a couple of them, but uh, it also allows you to plug in something like a panel. 
So here we have, you know, maybe A, B, C, D, and we'll turn it into multi-line data. And then um, here, for instance, let's create uh, like a series component and we'll set the step to something like five and then the count of 10 is fine. And then here's our list of other numerical numbers, but you know, it's not sequential or it is sequential, but it's um, with a step greater than one. And then uh, I'm just going to plug this right in. Again, we have an indication of how many total permutations we get here. This is a variable parameter component, uh, which means that unlike in the classic version where we plug everything in into the same input, here uh, each of our inputs on the left uh, gets its own input. And then um, we can see the values on the right. So let me just make this a little bit smaller. And all right, so these are our values. So now, again, we need a Boolean toggle. And we can go ahead and run this. So once again, you can see all of our values changing. And this time around, we're able to pass strings or text uh, as well as the numerical values, which is why this new component is a little bit of an upgrade uh, compared to the old one. All right, folks, this was a quick overview of utility components in TT Toolbox 2. And I thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.